Hello, welcome, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining our session here, joining our panel, uh, platforms all the way down. Uh, the reason why we, we named it that, we're, we're partially representing uh, CNCF's App Delivery Technical Advisory Group. And uh, the group wrote a, has been writing papers to help, uh, to help users adopt platforms and platform engineering. And uh, in the definition of platforms that we shared in uh, our first paper that we released in April, um, the way we define platforms as bringing together a consistent set of capabilities to serve some, some purpose, some end user purpose, ends up, turns out that that describes not just the platforms that we use in cloud computing, but really describes all of the layers of platforms and abstractions uh, that we often have in computing. Um, so here's an example where we go from the early reprogrammable you know, hardware to, to operating systems abstracting out hardware to infrastructure as a service abstracting even more hardware, and finally we get to today's platform capabilities. Um, I wanted to ask before we start the panel, um, how many people here work between the layers of infrastructure, you know, racking up servers in the data center, and actually writing app code? How many people are a platform engineer or a DevOps engineer, someone supporting, wow. Good, I, I'm, I guess I at least stated that clearly. I was a little worried about that. Okay, so with that, I wanna go ahead and uh, introduce our panelists, or ask them to introduce themselves. Um, so we'll, uh, if you could just share your name and your role and why, uh, why you're interested in platforms. We could start with you, Colin. Hi, I'm Colin Griffin. Uh, I'm founder and chief engineer uh, of a company called Crumware. Um, we're a software development consultancy. We teach uh, software vendors how to develop and deliver cloud-native solutions. Um, Platforms uh, were important to me. I got involved in platforms because I come from the application development and delivery side. Um, and as we started to teach and work with uh, software vendors and help them understand what is this containerization stuff, what does this look like, uh, we started to realize when we were trying to deliver products and hand them over to IT ops teams and folks that were gonna maintain these applications, they couldn't even spell Kubernetes. They didn't know what the heck we were handing over, and it was really, really, really challenging to actually get them to adopt this new way of thinking. So I had, it forced me back into understanding how do we actually treat operators as someone we can deliver to, and how do we treat them as an end user and develop our software and experiences to be supportive of the operators and not just the vendors. Very cool, thanks. Hi, my name's Abby Bangzer. I'm a principal engineer at a company called Sentasso, and we're building a framework called Cradix to help platform teams build those internal platforms to their specifications. Uh, my background in platforms is that I actually started in software delivery as a quality engineer, and it's been an entire journey over the last, over a decade in the industry of how do you deliver software faster, cheaper, safer, uh, in, in different ways. And that started maybe as test automation or analysis, uh, but it evolved quickly in my career into DevOps and, and platform engineering. And I have about five years of building platforms in, in organizations before I thought, this is too hard. And now I'm trying to make it a bit easier for everyone else. Hello, everyone. This is Srinivas Perry. I'm from Adobe. I'm a director of engineering there, and I'm part of a developer platforms group uh, which is uh, the foundation platform for the rest of the platforms. Um, I've been at Adobe for the last 20 years, and I've seen a quite a bit of transformation uh, that Adobe has gone through over the last 20 years. How many of you use Adobe products? Cool. My name is Joe Natali. <clears throat> I've been at Discover 15 years, uh, most of my time focusing on the payments line of business um, in software development, software architecture, that kind of thing. Uh, the past three months, I've transitioned over to the platform area, um, curating our platforms and observability. Yeah, and I guess that leaves me. I'm Josh. I am a solution architect with, for Red Hat, and so I'm constantly uh, encountering customers that, like Colin was saying, I just need to help their platform engineers, their, their, their supporting teams enable their app dev teams. 
Um, so I just find that that's so important, and that's why I'm part of our platforms working group, CNCF Tag App Delivery, to try to help uh, customers develop these uh, in-between teams to best support our, our app developers. Um, okay, so thank you all for introducing yourself. Um, very cool platform of platforms I especially like because that's something we've realized this year is that it's not just one platform like we were saying before. Uh, it's a whole bunch layered on top of each other. So the first question that comes to mind in, uh, in a panel about platforms is can you all define for us, and I, we'll start with Abby on this one. <laughs> I don't remember which one we said we would start with. I hope that's okay with you. Uh, can you define what is a platform? Yeah, I and mean, I think you gave a bit of an explanation that just in the English dictionary, a platform is something you can build on top of. You can get, build a higher level of abstraction, higher value on top of. What we're here talking about is cloud native platforms. And so in that space, what we're talking about is a set of capabilities, uh, documentation, processes, things that are common to your organization that help your business value get delivered to your customers faster and safer and easier. Um, and so what we're often talking about is, um, as I say, automation, a set of automation, but it's not always automation depending on where you are as an organization. So. All right. Um, Colin, would you like to take a shot at that one, too? Uh, so everything Abby said, obviously, which is great. The, um, one, <laughs> the, one of the reasons we're working with the, we have the platforms working group is there is a lot of different opinions about what a platform actually is and what that definition is. And so we're working to try to define some of that language. Uh, for me, personally, um, platforms is a, uh, the, the concept of a platform is a cohesive set of tools, processes, services, um, a, a, a singular set of things that we can provide to end users, where we're enabling end users, whether they're developers, whether they're a data person in our organization, the operators themselves, those folks, that they can actually play in the same sandbox. And the work that they do and they contribute via the platform moves the business forward accomplishes some sort of business value. And the strategy to make those tools and systems work together and serve that common purpose or that greater, that greater purpose, that to me is the concept of the platform. Bringing together something to serve a, a greater purpose. There was someone in the keynotes this morning, I think, that reflected on a platform for platforms and she talked about MLOps platforms and data platforms and other kinds of platforms. So that, that struck me also. Um, one of the things in, in our definition of, of platform that we put out in, in April is we talked about a bunch of capabilities uh, that you should consider and should strongly consider having in your platform. Uh, so I wanted to specifically ask Perry and, and Joe, in your experiences, what are the most important capabilities you provide? What, what were some of the first ones you provided in your platforms? So if Perry, can we start with you? Yeah, so let's also start with uh, what what we see as a platform, yeah, right? that would be great. Yeah, so I think uh, if I have to word two words to define the platform, the first one I would say is the multiplier effect, meaning uh, you have this security patch that you need to do. You have 1,000 services, right? How long does it take for <laughs> 40 teams to do it? What if, if one team, everybody is dependent <coughs> on that using those libraries and they upgrade it and we are done, right? I think multiplier effect is one of the big things that we at Adobe take into consideration while we do it. And while doing it, right, uh, the second word I want to use is uh, it has to be, when it is all working, it is invisible. Mm -hmm. We do have a, uh, one of the comp platform component called BBCs. We call it as a blessed base images. In 2016 and 17, it was a pioneering because we had to kind of, uh, like, how, how do we get these images? What do we do it and all that? Mm -hmm. We hardened it so much, we put a factory around it and all that, and as we speak day in and day out, people use those BBC images all the time. We never talk about it in our team meetings or in our plannings and all that. I think when it is working, it works, transparent. right? Yeah. I think multiplier effort and the invisible are the two important components from the maturity perspective, hmm. right? Coming back to capabilities, right? The way we kind of look at the capabilities is um, security and compliance or tables, stable uh -huh. stakes. Uh -huh. Right, because yeah. the, when you are not, then you are not getting the deals that you are looking for for the enterprise deals. Right? That needs to be there, and okay. you got to make sure that's always there. Right, so those are the clearly the stable stakes. Um, then, 
it comes into the next two things, which is infrastructure, reliability, stability, stability as a product and that part of it, and then the developer experience on top of that. Um, and cost efficiency is always an attribute. Uh, we don't start with that. Sometimes we have to start with that, but that's always there. Uh -huh. Okay. Wow. So those are four top uh, cost efficiency, developer experience, um, security, and infrastructure. and infrastructure. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, Joe, what do you find have been the most important capabilities at Discover? Yeah, so we try to focus on establishing sort of a consistent user experience between uh, like our private clouds as well as various public cloud offerings. So that's, that's something we still find to be a valuable piece of the platform is sort of that um, cloud neutrality um, or infrastructure neutrality. On top of that, we've built uh, a lot of self-service capabilities. Um, things like queuing, caching, databases, these are all things you can uh, declare in your YAML and the platform will provision for you, right? And then on top of that, secrets management, managing and rotating secrets, observability, and then, you know, like Perry mentioned, some of the table stake stuff like security and compliance, right? So our pipelines can submit a change ticket for you if you're doing a production deployment. They stash off your testing results into a a place that's auditable and you can retrieve that stuff for regulators if they ever come asking. So just hiding some of that stuff from the developer community and making it consistent across thousands of developers is something that we find kind of attractive from a platform perspective. Really interesting. I'm kind of hearing from both of you that whatever capabilities you do, the important thing is to be as transparent and best experience possible for developers and be as stable because you mentioned stability too. So it's about those qualities. Um, all right, well, thank you. Thank you all for helping us define what a platform is. Uh, it, it, that kind of takes us to the next question, kind of begs the question. So we understand what a platform is. Why exactly are, are you or your customers uh, building these platforms? What values, what goals do you, do you hope to get from them? Um, and Colin, we wanted to start with you on that one. So platforms, why are platforms important? Um, I think we were, we were joking outside when we came in. Um, uh, the two big words that we're hearing a lot at uh, KubeCon this year, it's Argo and platforms. And I'm glad we're not playing a drinking game around that. Um, but uh, platforms for me are very important, uh, or at least the concept now that we're bringing up and we're highlighting this term of platforms. Um, a platform strategy or platform engineering is is not a new concept. It's been around for a while, but the discussion is very new. Uh, it's very fresh, and that brings some new ideas. And implementing a platform strategy allows us to, it, it works as a carrier where we can bring in uh, product strategy and uh, teach uh, infrastructure providers or, or internal platform teams how to care and assess for their end users. And these are things in IT ops that may not have necessarily been on the forefront. And we can, when we introduce and inject this kind of platform strategy concept or the idea of understanding what your developers actually need to get their jobs done, right, and use that as a driver for developing new technologies and these new capabilities and these tools, then it allows the organization to move forward and hopefully actually pick some things. But most importantly, it creates that dialogue between app and dev, uh, between uh, IT ops, between the data teams. It creates this centralized conversation. But we don't have to treat internal users only with this mindset. Uh, if we're developing SaaS applications and everything else, we can treat outside parties and external developers with the same mindset. So when we talk about removing and eliminating cognitive load and making things easier, if we're thinking about it from a product development strategy as well, um, approaching a product development with a platform mindset allows us to um, eliminate thinking about our users in different ways. We can think about our business, our people, our external users in one similar way. Cool, so platform by adopting platforms, you kind of direct uh, the attention to the user's jobs to be done. Cool, thank you. Um, Joe, at Discover, what, what are some of the, why did you build the things that you've built? Yeah, so we, we saw a need for sort of more of a full end-to-end -end flow for developers, right? There was what I'll call some high friction processes as far as moving code from your laptop development environment all the way through to production, right? There were lots of manual steps, uh, like I said, lots of high friction processes to get that done. And what we wanted was, you know, a consistent way to do that 
across varying scrum teams throughout the whole organization, right? So um, having that sort of consistent uh, delivery process across the board is part of that value proposition for us. Very cool, very cool. So I'm kind of hearing from both of you, accelerating, accelerating development, accelerating your app developers. Perry, if you could answer that, and also, are there particular values that you espouse in your team, like platform as product or self-service? Um, yeah, why, at Adobe, why, uh, why have you adopted platforms? What are some of those values? Yeah, like I mentioned, right, I think platform has been there for Adobe for a long time. We have been using uh, for a long time. Um, so I think the first thing why the platform started and why we do that is always very clear because there is a business need and it helps with the business velocity at that point of time. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be a platform that has to be adopted by entire company at that point of time, mm -hmm. right? If there are some big business things that are happening that time and for that product team cannot handle it and there is a subject matter expertise everywhere, and this is the time probably we have to start it. I think most of the platforms at Adobe from 2011 have started small, trying to solve two big business use cases at that point of time. And then later on evolved into uh, the big part of it, right? I think that's, uh, that's one of the things. And second thing that I would say here is um, uh, developers, most of our development teams, uh, they have a breadth skill and the depth skill, right? So you have a subject matter expertise. There are some React developers. There are some Go developers. Yeah. They are like you have to enable for the business to move fast. That group focus on that part of the thing and then free them up from the other concerns, right? That's where the invisible yeah. thing comes into picture as well. So if you can group the similar kind of groups at one place, so then they can watch the trend of what's going on. Uh, who is just responsibility it is to watch what's going on with the Kubernetes and upgrade the APIs right, and everything right. and all that, that group, because rest, that rest of the Adobe can focus on the other parts of it, right? I think these are the two big uh, things on why, when we ask why platform, these two things come up. And true, I think it starts with the uh, purpose build, but once it goes, uh, it goes to the adoption, then all nine yards comes in that we have to kind of go through all of that. We can talk about that. Got it, got it, thank you. Yeah, Abby, do you have any uh, thoughts on this? Yeah, I think, I mean, these three have covered why platforms really well. I think you also were, were asking some questions there around um, what characteristics of the team kind of drive out mm -hmm. that platform mm -hmm. delivery. Other and I think things. some of the things I think about is um, that what platforms do is they scale DevOps for us. DevOps is the, the kind of way of working, of believing that you build and operate your services. But when you need to build and operate from kind of the bare metal all the way through to the design of the user interface. That's a lot of things to build and operate. And what platforms do is they take some of that aspect um, away and give that to a different team. And this is not back, you can think this is back to dev and ops, we've been here before, but it's not. It's applying the DevOps principles, but at layers and allowing us to build on the shoulders of giants. So the platform team builds and operates their services, while the application teams who build on, or, or other platform teams that build on top, build and operate their services. And so I think this is what allows us to scale specialists in an organization as big as Adobe and Discover and others, um, where you can't have a database specialist in every single application team, right? But you still need to have the data consistency and reliability that you need. I think the other, only other thing I'd call out is the, the kind of as a service pattern which I think um, I really like that we're talking about s providing services to the users of platforms these days because we kind of all as humans know what services are. We know what we expect. We know that, that we want them to meet us where we are. We want to not have to think about how they work. We want to know we can find them when we need them. We don't have to pick up the phone we can, to, to talk to someone. We can sort of get access to them when we want, how we want, without help, right? We're now finally applying those kind of human expectations about services that we have for booking you know, our restaurant reservations and getting access to TV shows. We're applying them to our daily jobs. Uh, and I think that's a really key aspect of what platform engineering is bringing today that is, is I think, reinvigorating a very long-term conversation yeah. about platforms, so. Very cool, yeah. So 
we're able to, I heard, heard a lot about, we're able to isolate and let people focus, and we're able to deliver better products as a result by letting people focus on uh, specific things. Okay, um, so I don't know how many people here are aware that CNCF just published a couple weeks ago a platform engineering maturity model. That's pretty good. <laughs> I see a few people, thank you, that's great. And uh, thank you very much to Sintasso and to uh, Paula Kennedy sitting over here. Thank you very much for getting us started with that and donating, so the hardest part is getting started. Uh, so this kind of reflects at a high level the matrix that that maturity model offers, and there's a lot of caveats around this, and you know, don't, don't put yourself down if you're not at L4, and read the paper for more on that. Uh, but essentially, we sum things down through a lot of conversations with, with some 50 people over the summer from various backgrounds uh, to five aspects um, to consider within your you know, platform engineering maturity. And in those five aspects, a continuum of, uh, of four levels of, of uh, potential characteristics of potentially where you might find yourself. Uh, so the five aspects are uh, investment, how your, how your company, how your organization funds and puts people into platform engineering products. Um, the next one is adoption, how it is that your users go about finding and picking up and using your products or your platform. Uh, interfaces, which is the CLIs and the APIs and the UIs and the different tools that you provide to users to use your platform. Um, operations is the way that you prioritize work within your platform teams uh, and the way that you organize those teams, what kinds of roles you might have on those teams. And then finally, measurement is how you measure the impact of your platforms uh, and whether they're having the success and meeting the goals that you wanted them to meet. So I wanted to ask the, the panel now um, around, so this kind of adds like a, a, an ask, a dimension of time to the whole thing, like how have our platforms changed over time? Um, and so I wanted to maybe start with Perry on this one, especially in the uh, adoption, and let's start with the adoption interfaces aspects. How have you seen Adobe's platform change over time in terms of the interfaces you provide, uh, the way people come to use it? Could you describe that? For us. Yeah, yeah, sure. Before we just uh, do that, right, I think I bumped into this only two weeks ago, uh, <laughs> and I started an internal thread. Uh, we are actually having a good brainstorming on that and how, how we can map it uh, to this one. Awesome. This is good. And I also want to call out, uh, for the folks who don't know, there's another project called Canoe, C-N-O-E. So they are also trying to uh, get this part of it. I mean, these kinds of initiatives are great, so then we can map it to what we are doing to the bigger picture, right? Yeah, share more. Yeah. I think on our side, actually, I was having a debate with my team. My team is sitting over there whether I should bring this up or not. But I will bring it up anyway, OK? <laughs> so the thing is um, uh, adoption and migration are the two different words, right? So the thing is, if you have signed up for the platform team, you pretty much are owning the migration. It's your responsibility to make sure you do the migration. You just let your clients know that so-and-so, so-and-so is migrating. That's so that they know about it. You, you uh -huh. don't put them on the spot and then add to their sprint backlogs and all that. We are migrating, you got to do this, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's one of the a big thing around. It's a hard job. I think as a platform, you cannot do that all the time, right? I think that's a migration. Whereas uh, you build the platform and they will commit, that never happens. That never, ever happens, OK? <laughs> so adoption is one no, of the- No, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. <laughs> So adoption is one of the very, very interesting uh, uh, challenge of the platform, uh, and there is no magic to it at all. You got to start with, and you always need to have your friend and your buddy on your product team who are actually talking about your product, are talking about your group, and then be enthusiastic about while we are building it and using it. That lighthouse phase of it is very, very important. Most of the platforms that we build, that's how we, we were able to uh, become successful with that. Right? By marketing. Yeah, so we call them actually, we call them platform champions. They are not part of our platform group, they are part of the product group, but we actually uh, call them as the platform champions. Uh -huh. And we actually train them, we give them the badges, and we give them all the recognition, everything and all that, because they do all the hard work of uh, getting to, uh, letting us know how it is going and what this thing and all that, right? I think that's a big part of all yeah. of that. Yeah. And it's not like you do one time, you're done with it, it's not. Because if you think about our journey of what we did over the last six, seven years, right, it's kind of crazy to be honest with you. Okay, we started with our own inbuilt CI CD tool, 
right? Because we did not have a good CI CD tool, it was in 2015. And that time we knew that there is something called Kubernetes, but uh, we can't even spell it that time. So DCOS was the right thing. So we had our CI CD tool, in house custom tool, yeah. uh, work with uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, DCOS with a good abstraction, right? So that's a good part of we did abstraction. We did an abstraction in 2015 16. That helped us quite a bit in 2018 19 when we had to go to Kubernetes. We said it's a migration as a product. Our end users does not have to do anything. We yes. moved all of them behind the scenes. Okay, that worked out quite well at that, that point of time. But that's not it, right? I think the story is with the Kubernetes. You can, uh, if you keep abstracting everything, so then you are actually making it slow. So then you need to kind of get into this GitOps and the new kind of a thing. Now we are going into another phase where we have to continue that journey again. We have to build a new set of platform champions. So depending upon maturity uh -huh. of where you are, uh -huh. it's an ongoing journey. It's an ongoing journey to continue to invest on it. Yeah, that's a really good insight. Like, it's not enough to just start the team, you know, one year and then just let it go. You got to continually train up those folks. Um, Colin, do you want to take a shot at that? How have you seen things change over time? Well, so I want to, I kind of want to look at the measurement and look at some of the aspects as well. Um, you know, as, as far as kind of measuring and looking at how things change over time, because a lot of us are here to figure out what the heck a platform is and how do we get started. Uh, it was one of the reasons we wanted the maturity model or built that in the, in the first place. And thanks to Sintasso for donating it, getting that rolling as well. Um, that was a huge help. Um, from a measurement standpoint and thinking about where we get started, uh, we have to start with a, a baseline. We have to actually document our platform. So when we look at that, our first measurement of the platform is just our inventory. Mapping out the capabilities that we need, making sure we have a clear understanding of who our users are and what they actually need, what tools we have in place, and making sure that that's documented. Um, that also goes back to operations and interfaces. Your documentation is an interface. Um, it helps people understand how they're supposed to use the platform, and leverage the platform to get their jobs done. So the best place to start is to get that inventory in place and use it as a tool to define who is responsible for what today. Over time, as you learn more about your users and more about the capabilities they need, that will change. And you'll be able to introduce new capabilities and swap out old capabilities and start to move on that path to migration. Now, that goes back to another measurement, which is, you could call it, I guess, net promoter score or something similar, but how well do your users actually understand how to use the platform? It, that could be if you're providing uh, a platform to third-party users, does your documentation enable them to get the full experience from what your platform provides? Is that there? Does that exist? For most cases, it does not exist. So getting that documented and measuring how well users can leverage your platform and effectively use your platform is important. But then that all leads down to velocity. I want to make sure that as we introduce these new capabilities that we're helping people get their jobs done easier and faster, that we ship products. And that could be a data workload that's generating a report. That's a product. It could be a new app that we have developing. That's a product. It could be um, you know, a, a sales report that needs to be sent over to my, my super. That's a product. So uh, is our platform enabling them to do those kinds of things? But it, it starts by working through the process and map yourselves to the maturity model. It actually works really, really well. That'll be a good tool, too. Thank you, Colin. Thanks for talking about measurement. Um, and Abby, is there a particular category in, in here which you would like to, to share your thoughts on? Um, uh, you could yeah. take adoption <laughs> and interfaces if you'd like, but. Uh, sure, I think we've covered those a little bit. Um, I think maybe one of the ones I'm most passionate about because I come from more of the internal infrastructure ops side of things is operations uh, because I think one of the things that I run into a lot um, in my experience as a platform engineer, I was so proud of the capabilities I provided to my teams that I jump-started teams, got them moving quickly with templates and quick starts and things like this. And then we had to migrate. So you're talking about migrations, you're talking about the fact that you want to move to Argo to GitOps and things. That was exactly my journey about four years ago, three years ago, something like that. And we had, it was a pretty medium-sized organization. There was maybe 50, 60 different apps and a team of maybe six or seven platform engineers. And we had to manually figure out how to move all these along because they all started with our template, but 
Everyone loves to change a template. Uh, and it wasn't something that we could operate on day two. And I think the thing about operations that we were trying to, that, that we really discussed at, in depth with the members of the group as we were, we were building this, was what it looks like to have day two operations built in as a mature early stage aspect of your platform. Um, I think there's concepts around, you'll hear like fleet ops or fleet manage, management, things that allow you to have that sort of impact of rolling out upgrades, um, having that sort of transparency to changes on your platform. And I think that's what you're starting to, to see through that operations um, aspect. And again, there's like 15 pages behind this that describes a lot of characteristics that you might see yourself in and will help you um, attach to, to some of these. And I think that's really exciting. Cool, thank you. And that reminds me, we actually have some papers up here, and if you want to come get them after, you can, or we'll have them at the Tag App Delivery booth later on, uh, but they contain some of this information for quick reference. Um, Joe, would you be interested in, in sharing the journey at Discover? Would you, would you want to take, pick up investment? That's the only one we didn't talk about, and that's about if I must. how we uh, um, <laughs> No, I think, I think one thing I'll say just, just holistically on the maturity model is, I think maybe a trap we've fallen into is we're pretty reactive to identifying gaps or enhancements to our platform. And so having the maturity model will give you a snapshot of maybe where you need to make some investments. Maybe it's you need more folks on your platform team. Maybe you need to reassess just the way you're provisioning backend services. Whatever it is, uh, having that maturity model that you can kind of come back to on some cadence and actually track your progress will help you just be a little more proactive as far as just reacting to when a consumer says, hey, can we get this on the platform? So I, I think that's where I, I see a lot of the value of this thing is just being able to measure yourself and track your progress. Cool. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everybody. Um, so before we wrap with, with one more question, I just wanted to put up this call to action. We're always looking for end user stories, uh, for people that are passionate about helping us edit up our documents and, and the advice that we, we try to share, uh, for people that want to help us create uh, prototype platforms or sample platforms to help others, uh, please come join our, uh, join our tag, read the papers, come visit us in the project pavilion the next couple days, we'll be there in the evenings. Um, join the Slack channel, there's always a lot of chatter there. Um, yeah, and with that, I want to ask everybody, and uh, we'll start with Perry here, if you could, uh, could share one last story, something unexpected, some lesson that you can share with us about platforms and platform engineering. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I think as shiny as it sounds, it's very, very, very hard work. <laughs> if you are signing up for being a platform team, whatever the size is, wherever you are on maturity, you are taking on a lot of responsibility, okay? And yet people will remember you only when things go wrong, okay? <laughs> That's what it is. I think uh, some of the areas where we will do better and we all have to do better is uh, uh, every day is a good day, every day we need to learn something. We need to show uh, the glass half full story of how fast you have made your deployments and what is how did you improve your success rate based on four weeks ago. Right? And all those kinds of things, you have to invest on that part of it and show your progress because that will keep your team motivated, that will keep your leadership motivated, your clients motivated. You have to tell that story and you got to be very, very transparent around this. I mean, when we come to this conference like this, we learn stuff. And when we go back, some of the things that we promise that we will be doing, we have to think back and see maybe that is not what we do. Maybe we found another partner, we found something else. I think those are the kind of conversations we need to have while that is still fresh, right? And then when those plans change, you have to communicate ac accordingly. So I think uh, you have to enjoy this. Once you are enjoying it, you will not feel this pain. But this is a, uh, this, we are at the best times. Be aware, be aware, yeah. Yeah, Abby, would you like to give us a sum? Yeah, I think it is hard work because it's a product and products are hard work. I think that's the thing I'm, I see the most is that this isn't, new or different. We need to think about our users, we need to write extensible, maintainable software, we need to think about how to absorb commodities as they become available in the, in the ecosystem, um, just like you do in a product. You do, people today aren't really building their own payment, payment 
front ends anymore, right? You can use Stripe for, for a lot of these things. There's all sorts of these things that we used to have to build, we don't have to anymore. And that's true in the platform space as well. So I think what makes it such hard work right now for platform engineering is that the tools aren't there. We're sort of stretch armstronging between very low level uh, aspects to very high level abstractions that are being expected of us. Hopefully that's something that we're st starting to improve on as an industry. You're seeing that in the vendors here at KubeCon and around the industry. Um, and I think that's the exciting movement right now with this reinvigoration of platforms. Would you like a chance to go, Colin and Joe? Or? Uh, I, the only thing I'll add is along this, you know, just to add to what Abby mentioned about products is platforms are a set of capabilities and products and they should be treated with the same rigor that you would treat a product you expose that generates revenue. A backlog, a product owner, product management, proper teams. Like having that stuff established day one is gonna be critical to the success of this thing. All right, thank you so much everybody for joining us. Thank you so much to our panelists. We really appreciate these insights and uh, have a great rest of your conference everybody. Thanks, Alfie.